Well, now he's got one on his debut. Well, the Wales B and the Wales Under-21 International repaying some of that £70,000 fee. And proving himself to be an ace poacher. It was the Frenchman Jean-Pierre Sim who set it all up. Long run from him, eventually got to the byline when he pulled it back. Brian McGorry was there with a the header. And Afian Williams turning the ball in. Gary Jones inside for Miller. Now Jones again. Miller has continued his run. He's got the foot in there too. A chance here. And Ian Clark with the header. He's gone wide. Well, that was a golden opportunity right on the stroke of half time. It was Paul Baker. The former talking man who probably had the best of the chances coming in on the far post just couldn't seem to get on top of the bounce of the ball. Managed to get it inside for Ian Clark with his header drifting wide of the goal. Torquay can breathe again. Hill back for Herrera. Now Healy. Nice for him to get a cross in. Holland losing it. Tully. Oh, he's put it over the top. How did he do that? That really was a golden opportunity for Steve Tully to have put the game probably beyond Hartlepool's reach. Healy getting the return from Magori. Looking to spread it to the other touchline where Herrera's made a good run. Hill just up ahead of him. Cross coming in towards Afian Williams. And well, that's two. I'm not quite sure how much Afian Williams knew about that one. He didn't get a clean header on it, but it didn't matter. Well, the cross in from Robbie Herrera. Met by the new signing. Not met cleanly. And it nevertheless nestled into the corner of the net. For Freestone. Back away. By Gary Neal. Williams again. Was he pulled back by Strodder? The referee says he was, but I think it's going to be a free kick on the edge of the penalty area. And that was very, very close to being a penalty. Well, it's Healy trying the shot. He's hit the bar. And it'll come from McGorry. Holland getting a save in. Well, so close to being number three. Oh, Brian Healy looking to just take the Hartlepool defence by surprise. Struck the free kick quickly. Very, very close to being number three. Off the bar. Came for Magori. Didn't really get full power behind the shot. And Holland scrambling across the line to make the save. Oh, with the header clear this time. It'll come for Magori. This time ball picked up by Sim. Williams is to his left. Can he find him here? Afian Williams with a chance to complete the hat trick. Oh, what a start for Afian Williams. Well, he got a hat trick in the Welsh League last Saturday for Barry. He's got another one this afternoon for Torquay United. And I'm sure that the Torquay fans will think that he's worth every penny. Well, again, it was Jean-Pierre Sim who set him up. He made the initial break. Williams had got away on his left, and when he was found, he took it cool as you like and curled it past Martin Holland. And Torquay United lead by three goals to nil. Did you actually have much hesitation about coming to a side like Torquay? They're struggling a little bit and, and, and that sort of thing. No, I just wanted to get into the league, and uh, you know, like several clubs have been interested in me, but not taken a gamble. And uh, looking up for me, like Wes Saunders has uh, took, brought me here. I guess I'm going to repay him the 70,000, which I'm going to sc score three goals today. <laughs> Clutching the match ball, I guess you'll be hoping... That you got one from last week, I think, didn't you? Well, I didn't get the ball, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, yeah, I've got the ball and uh, that'll be treasured in the uh, living room. Torquay all but safe now down near the bottom. It would take a real disaster to see them fall into the drop zone. And with Effie and Williams on board, I can't see that happening somehow. Well, action from Plymouth Argyle's match at Patrick against Hartlepool. But the playoff hopes of both Exeter City and Plymouth Argyle suffered a blow, with the Pilgrims losing at Chester and Exeter drawing 0-0 with Darlington.
John Ayres reports. It was a dream debut for Torquay's new striker, Avian Williams, who opened his account from an initial cross from Jean-Pierre Sim. His second also came from a header, even if it wasn't entirely as he'd intended. Williams' third goal involves Sim again, and the victory eased Torquay's relegation fears, but left Hartlepool level on points at the bottom. I've always believed in my ability, and uh, Wes Saunders, the manager, as you said, just play exactly the way I'm used to playing, and that's what I did today, and uh, I've, like I said before, I've scored three goals from it. Is firmly out of sight. All eyes on the Gulls' new hero, Effian Williams, after his home debut hat trick last week, including those of our match reporter, Trina Lake. After such an impressive victory over Hartlepool last week, Torquay had every right to approach yesterday's match with their confidence sky high against another side scrapping for their Football League survival. But the Gulls' self belief took a dent as early as the ninth minute. The superbly struck free kick from Damon Searle just too good for veteran goalkeeper Neville Southall. The former Welsh international not quite quick enough these days to get across his line for the save. Carlisle made it double trouble for Torquay midway through the first half and their second goal was as cheeky as you like. Rob Bowman no doubt claiming he meant the flick that beat Southall but from his reaction he clearly had little idea at first where the ball had ended up. Southall prevented Carlisle from going further ahead with a smart save to deny teenager Richard Tracy. Nothing wrong with those reactions. At the other end, Carlisle keeper Richard Knight was rarely troubled as the Torquay strike force failed to fire with anything like enough venom. The game was effectively settled by an incident right at the end of the first half. Southall dashing out of his area to thwart the lively Tracy Referee Roy Pearson from Peter Lou flashed the red card immediately for deliberate handball, but both managers thought it was a harsh decision. Southall clearly didn't like it. Ten-man Torquay battled bravely after the break and might have made more of their limited opportunities in front of goal. Their spirited resistance was finally broken for the third time on 90 minutes when stand-in keeper Wayne Thomas was beaten by Tracy. Granted the freedom of the penalty area, he had plenty of time to pick his spot. So there's the position for Torquay. Eight points between them and Hartlepool at the bottom. Tomorrow's home game is against Mansfield. Well, a quick check now on the clear of trouble just yet, so a good result at Darlington would help the cause considerably. Not an easy task, though, with the Quakers still harbouring faint hopes of squeezing into the playoffs. Our man with the mic at Feetums, Graham Sellers. Tully. Cleared by Heckingbottom. This is Gabby Adini again. Good tackle by Healy. It's three on three at the back. Brian Healy has found Apian Williams. Clipping it in for Beddo. He's there with the shot. What a goal! And Beddo, super left foot strike. He had it all to do there on the angle as the ball came over from Williams. Good build-up by Torquay, and full credit must go to Brian Healy, who did the dispossessing in the centre. 1-0 Torquay. Ledbetter got the block. Carruthers. Gabby Adini, that was a deft touch from the number 10. And it's gone forward for Carruthers with the shots, but Big Nev once again standing proud. He takes up a good position nearly every time Neville Southall stands his ground until the last possible second, only goes down if necessary. That was another comfortable take from Carruthers' shot. The occasional cross gust is becoming a bit of a menace. Well, Brumwell at back stick and Southall with a brilliant instinctive save. Well, Phil Brumwell steaming in at back stick there, got a firm header on it, and Southall just parried the ball away to safety. And a corner will do. Brumwell. Gabby Adini. This is Carruthers. Barnard in the centre. Gabby Adini trying to find him, but Southall there in the nick of time. There were a lot of lurkers. Two minutes of time to be added on. 
Well, it's come through to Williams. Left foot strike. What a superb strike from Williams. This guy is becoming a goals fan's favourite. Scored three times on his talkie debut the other week. This was a gem of a strike by Williams. An opportunist goal for Torquay United in first half stoppage time. Darlington nil, Torquay two. Brumwell. Gabidini lost his footing. Ledbitter. Incredibly messy, but Darlington certainly do look fired up for the second half. Long high clearance by Russell. Liddell got one of Sims' boots in his head. Brumwell, Gabidini, a bit of space for the first time for the big number 10. Well, he's got the ball into Carruthers, blocked on the line. And I'm not sure whether that hit Glenn Naylor. Well, that seemed to be a goal on a plate for Carruthers. He should have buried that one. There should have been any second time of asking. It seemed to strike Glenn Naylor, the Darlington number six, and fly off for a goal kick. Brian Healy then. Cleared by Atkinson. Oh, it's gone all the way through to Wayne Thomas with the shot, and good save by Priest. Well, that one just seemed to squirm its way through to Wayne Thomas, and... He was trying to take his tally for the season to three, and Priest stood between him and that achievement. Super save. Barnard. Being closed down by Tully, but this is Steve Gorn. Chance here for Darlington. Carruthers. He's got a shot in. Super save by Southall, and that's the chance gone. Gorn engineered it. It came out to Carruthers. His super low strike was defeated by Southall and Torquay cleared their lines. Super saved by Big Nev. Steve Gorn then to drift in Darlington's seventh corner. Comes out to Little. That was close. Well, Little just unleashed a dipping shot as that one came to him from the corner. Darlington's seventh. And Southall, I'm not sure he saw it till the last second, and then it would have been too late. Very unlucky. <laughs> Gabbiadini trying to make sure Darlington don't slump to their second home defeat on the bounce. Good stop by Neville Southall. And it's come back out to Barnard. It's a bad cross though, but Ledbitter clears for the corner. Well, Michael Gabbiadini is always dangerous, whether he's in the box or outside the box, and least one there, left-footed, and Southall once again. He's never down to the ground unless he's sure he can stop it, that he did. I thought out of our last six, I thought this was going to be one of the hardest, um, but we've came here, put a great performance in, at the end of the day, it could have been five, um, you know, the chances in the second half that we've had, um, so it's very pleasing. A victory that just about confirms survival for Torquay. That's the picture then with five games left to play, starting at home to Barnet on Tuesday. Well, a quick check today with Torquay United. A disappointing first season in charge for Wes Saunders, but plenty of good signs ahead of the next campaign. The best they can hope for this time around is mid-table security, and a victory at Peterborough would finally achieve that. Commentary comes from Graham Sellers. This is Brian Healy. Herrera. Well, it's a long searching ball which Neil contests. It falls for Gary Neil. It's his shot. Narrowly wide. This is Hooper. Oh, Grazzi only taken chase. It's a good header by him and good save by Vasey. Excellent stuff. Well, it was a long searching ball, and Grazioli's already scored 12 goals for Peterborough this season. Thought he got his 13th, but Kenny Vasey produced a, a good save. Edwards. Well, it's fallen for Gary Neal again. He's lining up a shot, but. Oh, it falls to Tully. Good start by Tyler. Well, I think that Steve Tully really should have done better there.
Well, this is Etherington on the ball, and good shot. It's come to Grazioli, and it's a goal. And Giuliano Grazioli has already come close with a header, which Vasey stopped earlier on in the game. This time, he's managed to get his 13th of the season, and it couldn't have been easier, could it? 1-0 Peterborough. Oh, nasty collision. Grazioli on the ball, plenty of space for him. Well, it's a flick from the defender in the end, Healy, and not too far wide of the upright. This is Hooper, and it's three on two at the back. Hooper steaming forward. Grazioli in acres of space, this is Grazioli. Oh, it's Farrell on the ball. Farrell shot, super save. Well, Peterborough really do seem to be fired up in the second half. David Farrell, architecture of that one. And the final shot from him, super one-handed save by Ken Vasey. Richard Scott for Peterborough. Well, he's evaded one challenge from Agri and another one. Grazioli got ahead in it. This is Etherington, 2-0! Well, in amongst that, Grazioli was flattened by one of the defenders, but he still got a touch on the ball. It was enough to send it through to Etherington, who was all alone, and he just drilled it underneath Vasey. This is David Farrell. Well, he comes through to Etherington, but... McGorry knocked it into touch. Peterborough's seventh corner. They really have plucked them up top. He haven't had any. Well, it comes out to Shields. Excellent save. Vasey couldn't see that one. I'll tell you that one for nothing. Didn't see it till the last second. Stuck a hand up and a brilliant instinctive save. What a goal! Well, that really did stun London Road. Dean Hooper curling that one in off the back stick. Ken Vasey dumbfounded, rooted to the spot. What a super strike by Hooper. And that's Peterborough 3, Torquay United 0. Shield. Torquay under the cosh again. This is Simon Davis. Well, he's fashioned a chance, fades it just wide. Well, Torquay are all over the place. They're at sixes and sevens, and Simon Davis on a roving commission wasn't too far wide. Simon Davis tackling back. Well, this is still he on the ball. He's gone all the way. Well, Vasey got a touch on it, surely. Well, the referee's given a goal kick, and I can't believe that. That was a nice touch over from Ken Vasey. I'm sure he'll tell you that one after the game. Nichols. Well, they've given it away cheaply, Torquay. And it's the wrong man to give it away to. It's Farrell. It's still Farrell. It's a substitute. Good save. And what a miss from Drew Broughton. Well, Broughton with two bites at the cherry. The first one superbly blocked by Torquay's keeper. And, well, what about that? Clearing miss. Well, the flag stayed down and base is out, but Broughton's still there with the chance. It might be going in, it is now. Francis Green with the finish. Well, that really was a debatable goal because I'm not sure whether. Broughton was offside as he went through there. Basically came out in any instance, you've got to play on to the whistle. And Francis Green makes sure. 4 0, an emphatic victory. They came at us, we never handled them. We looked uh, like we had a lack of enthusiasm to, to go out and take the game to them. Uh, and we looked like an away side that's come to defend, and, and that, that's basically not good enough for us. So, Torquay relatively safe near the bottom. There's a nine-point cushion for them at the moment, although Scarborough do have a couple of games in hand. 
Well, that's it for now. I'll be back at six with them. Talk United desperate to put the memory of last week's 4-0 defeat at Peterborough behind them with a good performance in front of their own fans. But they weren't expecting too many favours from a Rotherham side still chasing promotion. Our man at the match, Jeff Welsh. Herrera charging down that wing. Comes back to Ledbitter. Healy, he'll have to be quick. He is Ledbitter. Chance for Wayne Thomas it was coming charging in. Well, Thomas, defender that likes to come forward. Lovely cross. And Mike Pollitt certainly had to get there first. Here comes Warren. Fortune West in that middle. Looking dangerous. Still Warren. Can he get the cross in? Well, it's not, he's not finished yet. Back to Roscoe. There's Fortune West. Chance for Williams. That's a shot, and what a superb save from Neville Southall. Well, the ball came across, eventually coming out to Mark Williams. Nice shot, but equally nice save. Roscoe gets the ball back. Here's Danger, Warren, still Warren. Great save by Neville Southall. Well, Warren finding plenty of space in the box. Great save by Neville Southall. Where was his defence? Edo up against Varty. Varty not managing to head it the right way. Have the challenge again. Here's Williams. That's a free kick. Here comes Ledbitter. Shoots and a fine save by Mike Pollitt. Well, he struck that one well, Chris Ledbitter. And Mike Pollitt took that equally as well. Healy now showing what he can do. So close to being a great ball that. Here's Williams. Chance for a shot from Williams. A shot and a superb goal. Well, you won't see a better goal than that. Brian Healy it was who started the move. The ball came to Avian Williams. And how about that for your fifth Torquay goal in as many matches? The super Welshman strikes again. Certainly the whole pace of this game seems to have gone up a couple of notches. Healy, who created the first goal, can he create a second? Herrera, chance to make it two! Super stop. Well, Brian Healy, once again, finding himself in space. Great ball through to Robbie Herrera. Good stop by Mike Pollitt. Williams winning out against Hurst. Williams and Tully ahead. Better on that far side. Williams with the shot. Well, there's just no stopping the Welshman when he's got an eye for goal. Lovely shot. Well taken by Mike Pollitt. Platt into Healy. Chance for a shot. Hits it well. Well, that wasn't far wide, was it? Brian Healy, he always seems to find the space. Nice shot. Unfortunately, never went in. Healy, through to Avian Williams. Can Williams score his second of the match? Just with nil to beat. Here's Sim, chance for the Frenchman to score, and he's done it! Jean-Pierre Sim scores his first goal for Torquay. And what about that for a celebration? Well, it was Avian Williams once again in the thick of it. The ball eventually coming out to Jean-Pierre Sim. He just side-footed the ball home. Viva la France! Today... Good result against a, a top side that's going for promotion and the lads that we've got here 
um, are capable of doing that week in, week out. But they've got to start believing in themselves. But I think uh, as far as the pressure's off, it's nice to know now that, w that we are safe. Um, although the only time I've, I've really, I, I think, felt the pressure this year was, uh, was when we played Hull at home and, and we beat them 2-0. Which, uh, which set us on a little run. But apart from that, I've always knew we were going to see it because we've got the quality here, but it's doing it consistently week in, week out. So at last, we can say it. Torquay definitely safe from relegation and looking forward to another season in Division 3. Well done to Wes Saunders and his team, who are now aiming for a mid-table finish. Three wins. Third, but first, the main highlights from Torquay's trip to Hull. The gulls clawing their way towards mid-table, while their hosts still had a lingering fear of the drop. The action from Boothbury Park, described by Trina Lake. Torquay's hopes of marking their centenary with a rare away win came to nothing, as Hull grabbed the points that finally made them mathematically safe from relegation, leaving Scarborough, Carlisle and Hartlepool to sweat it out for another week. The only goal of the game came after 31 minutes. Route 1 football, David Brown supplying the finish. The goals looked more lively in the second half, but they lacked any real cutting edge. And although manager Wes Saunders was pleased with the greater degree of control they exerted, he wasn't impressed with their performance in front of goal. Hotshot Avian Williams, the closest to snatching an equaliser. Saunders wanted a do-or-die attitude in the penalty area, but this free kick rather summed up the problem. Perhaps United are saving the best till last in their final home game against Shrewsbury on Saturday. So there's how the lower end of Division 3 looks this lunchtime, with just one home game to go for the Gulls. Right, let's take a quick look at... First, though, to Brunton Park. Not too much for Plymouth Argyle to play for, but there was certainly plenty at stake for Carlisle. Defeat, and they definitely be playing conference football next season. Even a victory might not be good enough to save them. Trina Lake reports on what turned out to be a quite incredible game. Brunton Park wasn't a place for the faint-hearted yesterday with drama from start to finish. The first half was exciting enough. Carlisle hitting the bar. The Pilgrims almost scoring through skipper Martin Barlow and the Cumbrians having a goal disallowed before Argyle defender Paul Gibbs was carried off with a broken leg. But all that was nothing compared with the footballing fairy tale that unfolded after the break. Chapter one and youngster Lee Phillips scores his first league goal for Argyle after a dazzling run through the Carlisle defence. Chapter two and the home side grab a lifeline as Captain Marvel David Brightwell thumps an equaliser past James Dungey. But with Scarborough drawing at home to Peterborough, a point wasn't enough. The tension almost unbearable as the plot reached its climax in the fourth minute of stoppage time. Enter the hero, goalkeeper Jimmy Glass, and what happened next is the stuff of footballing legend. Glass swamped by a tide of emotion after scoring the goal that keeps Carlisle in the league. Roy of the Rovers couldn't have done it any better. The crowd of 7,599 couldn't contain their excitement, and who could blame them? But the game still had to be restarted. Two seconds was all it took, though, before the party could begin again. They'll be telling their grandchildren I was there when a touch of sheer glass kept Carlisle in the league. What an incredible game. A result which saved Carlisle and left Plymouth behind their Devon rivals in the third division table. Exeter 12th, two points ahead of Argyle. Right, a quick at Playmore. They may be in the lower reaches of Division 3, but there have been plenty of positive signs for Torquay manager Wes Saunders in recent weeks and expect several new arrivals in the summer. Seth Conway saw them in action against Shrewsbury. Nasty. Neat turn. Looking to take on Wayne Thomas. Well, he's going to go all the way, Lee Steele. This could be a cracking goal! He did the hard work, did Lee Steele, but then wasted a glorious opportunity. He got the ball under his control, and as Neville Southall waited to make the save, he didn't have to.
Now trying to go the long way around Nichols and Thomas, and Thomas brought him down. And Wayne Thomas will be talked to, a, at the very least, by Matt Messias, today's referee. Gales forward for this set piece. It's going to go over the top of him. Great save from Southall, and it goes in. And it's Steve Kerrigan who's given Shrewsbury Town the lead. The first header came in. Neville Southall got to it, but then Kerrigan followed in and had the easiest goal on the last day of the season for him to score. Herrera. Deep cross away by Wilding. 